What's up guys, Justin here of Yugatech, and the OPPO Find X3 Pro is very interesting. I'm not gonna deny that in a sense, its camera module and color look similar to the iPhone 12 Pro. But we often find ourselves comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's not just because they have the same chipset, but there are more factors which include their powerful displays and very good set of cameras. So in this video, let's see what this OPPO Find X3 Pro has to offer. Really? When you first see this phone, you'll probably look twice too and might even ask, what, that's OPPO? Square camera modules have been around for a while now, but on the Find X3 Pro, it looks like a mirror view of the iPhone 12 Pro. We get four lenses that we'll talk more about later on, then there are some subtle differences such as the oblong shaped LED flash and the mic placement between the two main cameras. Plus, OPPO managed to make it look more refined by seamlessly blending it to the curved glass back. You like it? There's still a noticeable bump, but attaching the free case makes it less protruding. What we have here is in the blue color, and as you can see, it has a nice matte finish on it, together with a simple OPPO branding embedded. It's IP68 rated for dust and water resistance, and ergonomically, it really fits to palm well even if you have small hands. Compared to its predecessors and other flagships for that matter, it's surprisingly light and slim to grip in a premium way. Up front is a vibrant 6.7-inch AMOLED display with slim bezels all around, a hole punch notch on the upper left, a front speaker on the upper middle, and an in-display fingerprint scanner on the low, lower part. We get some antenna bands all around the sides, and specifically on the right, you can find the power button with a green accent on it. Meanwhile, on the left side is the volume trigger. They're all tactile and easy to reach. Up top is a secondary microphone, and moving over to the bottom are its Dolby Atmos stereo speaker, USB-C port, main microphone, and a dual SIM tray that are both 5G capable. And yes, it doesn't have a micro SD card slot nor a headphone port, but we do get a free Type-C earphones in the package. Overall, this design is simply stunning, and I like that this blue variant doesn't attract much fingerprint smudges. It can be slippery though, so we suggest slapping a case on. Moving on to display, the Find X3 Pro stands out with a slightly curved 6.7-inch AMOLED screen with a resolution of 30 to 16 by 1440 pixels and a pixel density of 525 pixels per inch. It's protected with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and we also get a pre-installed screen protector on top. The Find X3 Pro flaunts a 10-bit color display which is a first for OPPO, so this means that it can provide 64 times more colors than a standard 8-bit display. Therefore, expect rich and vibrant colors as well as deep blacks. On top of all that, it packs a 120Hz adaptive refresh rate HDR10 Plus support, 240Hz touch sampling rate, and a peak brightness of up to 1300 nits. Putting it side by side with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, the colors on the Find X3 Pro does seem a tad bit boosted. But if you're not gonna nitpick, you really wouldn't notice it that much. Either way, these two phones offer the best displays you can get in a smartphone to date. In the display settings, there's a lot to tweak around. If you're a fan of dark mode, this one gives you numerous options including a beta dark mode theme for apps that don't have native dark modes like Lazada or LinkedIn. Then there's the dark mode style which lets you choose if you want a deep black or enhanced mode, the medium style, or the gentle style if you don't like the full-blown dark mode. There's a nature tone display option as well which is much like Apple's true tone feature. And besides letting you adjust the screen color temperature, you can also choose the screen color mode from vivid, gentle, cinematic, and brilliant. The brilliant mode is great, but I wouldn't recommend it when you're going to edit photos on the phone, then uploading it to social media. The colors wouldn't be realistic. Oftentimes, we just stick to vivid, which is the recommended mode. Interestingly, there's color vision enhancement that's much appreciated for people with color blindness. Doing the test will help you get a more personalized color production on the phone. Nice! Now let's talk about the resolution and refresh rate. The Find X3 Pro allows you to maximize the display to an immersive 1440p resolution and an adaptive 120Hz refresh rate simultaneously. While Oppo said that its adaptive refresh rate can drop down to 5Hz, in our experience, we only got 120Hz and 60Hz. There's no in-between. Most of the time it uses 120Hz, then it will drop down to 60Hz for apps like YouTube, TikTok, and the camera app. I don't know, maybe they'll fix this with an update. 
By the way, you can drop the resolution to full HD plus or auto select, as well as toggle the refresh rate to the standard 60Hz if you want to save more battery life. Audio-wise, sounds come out both from the earpiece and the down-firing stereo speaker. This combination provides clear tunes that can get loud enough for a medium-sized room without sounding too teeny. The quality isn't the best but we get very good highs and some decent bass going on. With the Dolby Atmos support, you can personalize the listening experience with different sound profiles according to your preferred sound boost. When it comes to software, the Oppo Find X3 Pro runs on Android 11 skinned with ColorOS 11.2. This is the first time that we're using ColorOS 11.2 and it has been convenient and customizable. Of course, there's still a lot of bloatware but you can always uninstall them if you like. You can navigate with gestures or the usual buttons, plus there's an app drawer option for the home screen as well as a simple mode if you like to keep things, well, simple. Tinkering the home screen design is now easier. Just long press on the home screen until the options pop up. From there, you can choose your preferred wallpaper, icons, overall layout, widgets, and transitions. If you want to tweak much further in the settings, there's a personalization category where you can pretty much customize everything from the always on display to the font and edge lighting effect. For multitasking, besides the usual split screen, you can also opt for the floating window and mini window toggle to allow specific apps to continuously float on the home screen while you're doing other things. This is also something that we've seen in Samsung's One UI 3.1 and Xiaomi's MIUI 12. Other features include system cloner, assistive ball, quick return bubble, digital well-being, and parental controls. Moreover, I like that it has a weather adaptive alarm ringtone that nicely adapts the alarm tone according to the current weather. It's in the small details. Overall, the new launcher is in our favor. However, something that personally puts me off though is the Instagram compatibility. Posting IG stories natively with the Find X3 Pro gives that low-res quality that's more evident when it comes to videos. Anyways, for biometrics and security, you can unlock the phone via face unlock and the in-display fingerprint scanner. Generally, both work snappy. However, it is hard to ignore that the fingerprint sensor is placed oddly on the lower part of the screen. So you'll really have to adjust your finger lower to unlock the device. Nonetheless, this fingerprint scanner has a useful quirky feature called fingerprint quick launch. From the get-go, you can launch an app by holding the scanner for an extra second and sliding your finger towards the app you want to open. Okay, under the hood, the Find X3 Pro is powered by the flagship Snapdragon 8855G processor, together with an Adreno 660 GPU, a generous 12GB of RAM, and 256GB of internal storage. With this configuration, using multiple apps as well as continuous gaming isn't a problem. It's one of the best hardware you can get to date. Apps launch fast and we did not encounter any stutters. For a boosted gaming experience, you can take advantage of the GameSpace app which allows you to choose if you want to play under low power mode, balanced mode, or even competition mode. The Find X3 Pro has a vapor chamber cooling system, but you might still encounter some heating when maximizing the display resolution and refresh rate and then use the phone consistently, especially when playing games. Although I noticed that it doesn't get as warm as the Xiaomi Mi 11 or the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Somehow with its matte glass back, you wouldn't feel the heating as much as in a bare glass design. But we still do recommend that you use a case for extra protection. If you want to see some numbers, here are the benchmark scores that we got. Quickly on connectivity, the Find X3 Pro is equipped with dual SIM 5G, 4G LTE, NFC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.1, and Wi-Fi 6 support. Now keeping this device running is a decent 4,500 mAh battery with 65 watts Super VOOC 2.0 flash charge, 30 watts Air VOOC, and 10 watts reverse wireless charging. We do get a 65 watts power adapter that can charge the device from 0 to 100 in less than 40 minutes. We ran it through the PC Mark's battery test with a Quad HD Plus resolution plus the 120Hz refresh rate on, and the Find X3 Pro got 11 hours and 13 minutes. Meanwhile, for our standard video loop test, we toned it down to a full HD Plus display with the standard 60Hz refresh rate. With this, we got a complete 18 hours and 7 minutes. The SuperVOOC 2.0 fast charge is a very good compromise for its average battery capacity. But in our everyday use, if you want to consistently max out the display and at the same time play games, then you'll need to charge it at least twice in a day. So now let's finally talk about the cameras. 
Its quad rear camera setup is composed of a 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 primary lens and another similar 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 for ultra wide with PDAF. The third camera is a 13 megapixel telephoto, while the fourth is a 3 megapixel micro lens with a ring LED flash. Meanwhile, on that punch hole notch is a 32 megapixel front shooter. As Oppo managed to maximize a 10 bit display, they also pushed their cameras to save photos in 10 bit HEIF format. But it's not turned on by default, so head over to the camera settings to turn it on. It is quite ahead of its time. While not most people today can appreciate its glory, it can be really useful if you intend to edit your photos a lot or even professionally. Using the standard mode gives you vibrant and sharp images with great dynamic range. If you want some minimal color and saturation boost, then you can leave the AI toggle on. Nicely, the standard mode also provides a nice bokeh effect even if you're not using the portrait mode. For macro, automatically the camera switches to the ultra-wide lens if you place it closer to the subject for an instant macro shot. If you want to take advantage of the 250 megapixel lenses, then click on the drop-down arrow below the AI icon. Turning it on will automatically turn off the 10-bit mode which shouldn't be a problem. And of course, what sets it apart from most camera smartphones is that it's also available for ultra-wide takes. These high-res lenses give off crisp photos with a hell lot of details. We get almost the same color production and dynamic range to the standard mode, but it's available just in case you need the high quality. The Find X3 Pro allows you to zoom in from 2 times to 5 times to 10 times and up to 20 times. With good amount of lighting, we get clean zoom shots with colors that are still a bit close to the one times normal mode. But if you want better zoom quality, then you can use the 50 megapixel lenses, then crop the photo. For night photography, here's a reference without any night mode on. Although we get a well lit shot, it still looks grainy and washed out. Once we use the night mode on, the shot really improved. There are still some muddy parts, but we do get better exposure and more details. Additionally, I like that you can also use the night mode even for the front camera. Now, now things get more interesting as we talk about its fourth lens which is the microscope camera. As the name suggests, it is a microscope straight from your smartphone. It has its own flash to light up your micro subjects and to capture, you have to purposely move the camera very close to it. Seriously. It's a gimmicky feature that amazes us. If you have shaky hands, you can take a video with it and just take the auto screenshot. Well, it's definitely a unique feature that you can brag about, but after some time, will you still even use it? Maybe if you're a fan of capturing up-close details, yes. Or you're just bored. Okay, let's move on to selfies. The 32 megapixel front shooter produces crisp photos with natural looking colors on the skin. It's very good for your social media posts, and we like how the beauty mode doesn't go overboard. Portrait selfies look good too, but it struggles with dynamic range. It just gets overblown, but then it performs well once we use the normal selfie mode. For other features, we have Pro on board, there's stickers, panorama, and dual view video. Speaking of videos, the Find X3 Pro can shoot up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and you can toggle from ultra wide to 5 times zoom while shooting a video. For stabilization, you can turn on the Ultra Steady mode or the Ultra Steady Pro mode that's limited only up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. There are additional video features that you can turn on in the settings. There's focus lock, inertial zoom, and audio effects that can help you record better audio quality when shooting in landscape orientation. So now that we've talked about almost everything, let's now discuss the price. For the Philippine market, we're not yet sure if the Oppo Find X3 Pro will be available as there's no official price yet. But it retails for 1,150 euros, so we're looking at the above 65,000 range, which is close to the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra's price. Now, definitely, this Oppo Find X3 Pro checks a lot of top flagship boxes, but it didn't go too far from the Find X2 Pro. Don't get me wrong, it is outstanding and all out premium. We think its specs justify its price, but to simply put, the competition is tough. Still, if you're looking for one of the best flagship smartphones in 2021, one, then the Oppo Find X3 Pro is one worth considering. And that's it for this review guys. Thanks for watching till the end. Share to us what you think about this Oppo Find X3 Pro in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Justin, and don't forget to wash your hands and stay at home.